Thanks, Rihanna. Uh, I'll be brief because I know we're all eager to hear from Sister Ellen um, and looking back on the week. But just before we begin, um, a couple of thanks. One is a huge thank you to everyone um, who's contributed this week. I mean, I've personally found each of the talks have been so different, um, showing different sides, different aspects of the work that we do. And once again, as with last year, it makes me both incredibly proud and incredibly motivated as well for how much more need there is and how much more we can be doing. So it's been fantastic to hear what's taking place um, across the group and beyond um, and to learn from that. I also want to thank Rihanna uh, once again for pulling together this week, um, for bringing everyone in. I know it can be a, a fairly chaotic thing to do, um, but I'm very grateful. I'm quite pleased that we're beginning to, to put this in as a regular feature now. We know that September is, is the Feast of St Vincent and it's also our Vincentian Values Month. Um, it's just a nice thing to start to embed to recognise that this is what we do every year. We come together, we share our stories and we learn from it. So just a thanks to Rihanna. Um, and also thanks to everyone who's participated this week, who's asked questions. Um, often some of the most interesting discussions have come from the questions and the responses I find. So I've, I've got pages and pages of notes from the talks this week. I think, oh, that's something to ask, that's something to look up to. So just to say um, thanks to everyone. Uh, but I will stop now and quite happily hand over to Sister Alan, who's going to, uh, who's going to walk us from the week. Thank you, Mark. And uh, good morning and good evening to everybody. Um, and I just reiterate also my thanks to the DC Services team, Mark and his team and Rihanna in particular for this marvellous week. I just encourage you next year to advertise it more widely. The quality of it is fabulous, uh, but the attendance hasn't been so good. So please do um, pr promote it and um, see if we can get more family members next year. And maybe just, just to make it absolutely clear that the same week every year is now an established week and then people will be expecting it. Um, and if you, if anybody, if you know anybody, maybe Rihanna, you can send this out around all your networks that all of the recordings are available on the YouTube channel. Um, so that's just a plug because I'm so um, delighted with the week and uh, want the work to spread far and wide. Um, those of you that are here have been brilliant. You've been a core group every day, every now and then somebody else pops in, but mostly all of you have been here all week and that's fabulous. And when you look round, it's very diverse. Um, and we've had some new faces. Um, it's international. There was one day when we had um, Paris, Nigeria, Australia, Scotland, England, um, all kind of on screen somewhere. So um, that's brilliant. Um, and the new faces, you're, you've all been very welcome. Today uh, is the last day, and it's my privilege as the Chair of DC Services to conclude and summarise the week and try to draw some reflections from it for all of us to take away and, and work with. What I have found stunning this week is the way we have wandered in and out of the very global and the very local. The juxtaposition of the two I think has been very interesting. And there's that old hackneyed phrase now that we often use, think globally and act locally, or act locally and think globally, or think globally and act globally, or whatever way configuration wants to put on it. It's certainly been here this week in all of its guises. We've moved from macro to micro, from international to next door. And what an amazing thing that is. When I look back to the Vincentian week last year, all the inputs were from DC services. In the course of that year, wingspans have opened up across the world. Um, and this week has been very global and very local. So let's try and remember back across the week. Um, the week was opened um, by Mark um, Gennara and then by Mark McGreevy, who is of course already a well-known international figure for the family. And on that day, day one, Sister Franca um, took us to the United Nations. Well, you can't get a more global perspective than that. Um, she made emphasis on interconnectedness, on communication, collaboration, cooperation, partnership. She called it multinational relationship. And she applied this to the pandemic, to Ukraine, uh, and to the financial crisis that's now emerging. All these need multinational action. 
She also spoke about human rights, about armed conflicts uh, and the necessity to protect the innocent, the fight against terrorism, the protection of the climate, trade, travel and telecommunications. And she reminded us of the 17 sustainable goals. She called them measurable targets. The collaboration of the NGOs that she works with is to draw attention to United Nations debates that affect those living in poverty. And we are, I think, impressed and delighted to have um, Franca representing that in Geneva, but also to remember that we have other Vincentian family members at the UN, both in Geneva and in New York. Um, and so somehow uh, the work of the UN has been brought closer to us. And I think we can all recognize there are dots to be joined between that level and wherever we are. On the second day, Sister Maureen took us through crisis after crisis and she started with Brexit and then moved to COVID, Ukraine and global recession. She reminded us very effectively that it was the same with different language in 17th century France. And she took us through all that Vincent and Louise coped with and how poverty was created through all these events. And she told us how Vincent pleaded in the highest places for justice, as well as working with Louise to provide services. Maureen brought us back to Vincent's dependence on divine providence as a value. From both of these, we see the movement between the global and the local. We see that as Vincentians, we belong to the world by being called to act on what is in front of us, wherever we are in the world. The global crises have globalized us, have shaken us, have brought us to our knees, attempted to create um, a leveling out. But of course, governments do not take that up. And instead, the world is back to being driven by those who have to the detriment of those who have not. In the end, the effects of all this are local, like they were for Vincent and Louise. And we serve as we can, and we make a difference where we are in relationship with those we serve. This leads us to day three and the wonderful, detailed, local story Sister Deborah told us about St. Mary's House of Welcome and its response during the pandemic. This was the detailed story of one project's journey from being suddenly unable to operate to quickly, immediately implementing a new model of service from a work where seriously needy people came in to a work where the service had to be delivered at the door and way beyond into the city of Melbourne. A story of extraordinary cre creativity, collaboration, partnership, availability and flexibility. Thousands of meals each containing a written personal message of hope and care. And the cost. St. Mary's House of Welcome now struggles financially and is in recovery. The cost of staffing, of COVID sickness, of, all, of, of, of many, many things. But Deborah said, we would do it again. She drew us back to Vincent's model, which I always associate with Chatillon originally, that story. The model which listens first, which defines need, discerns how it can be met, looks at who could help, and keeps reflecting and assessing over and over again. Constant change in the environment 
necessitating constant change in response. I know that from my viewpoint in the chair of DC services and in uh, my role with the incorporated works in Australia, I currently uh, can give witness to the fact that all our incorporated works and all our services projects have been through similar local experiences and have responded in almost identical ways. That's amazing. The afternoon of the third day took us to the international scene once more, as Matthew Carter shared with us the Vincentian family significant efforts in Ukraine. What an example of the Vincentian family coming together he gave us. Every branch and more, collaborating under the leadership of the amazing Father Vitali to bring relief. International intervention in which we have all been involved, one way or another, in a local crisis, which in turn has an international impact. So here we have an example which has a circular dimension or a spiral situation. A global crisis with local impact and moving back to the global impact again, over and over again. Matthew highlighted the relationship between the importance of local intimate knowledge and context. He spoke about the local um, with DePaul and the Vincentian family and the ability to respond locally and globally at the same time. That's different. And we had that wonderful moment where he told us about the United Nations representative who suddenly discovered DePaul and this marvelous organization that he didn't know the name of that he was busy telling Matthew about. And Matthew was able to say, well, actually that's DePaul International and I'm the chief executive. That was a great moment. Um, so Franca, wherever you are, I hope that uh, you, you'll be able to draw attention to the United Nations, the discovery of DePaul International. Yesterday, Andrew Varley inspired us with the local struggle to support families in London who were already poor and are now beset by the cost of living and energy crises. The deepening of already existing poverty that is about to take place all over the place and how the struggle really as to how to deepen the response. The family project is now delving into rights, into information giving, into food banks, reaching out into partnerships with organizations like the Citizens Advice Bureau and other advice services, opening longer hours for people to stay warm, providing lunches more often, and above all, preserving their hallmark, which is about joy and fun and community for children and fam families. So much needed when people feel helpless and hopeless. So in the span of the week, we traveled from the United nation's worldview, to the world of Vincent and Louise, to the two major cities of Melbourne and London, and to the country of Ukraine. Just think about that. Wow. And this is but a glimpse of the enormity of the Vincentian family worldwide that we belong to. So what can we conclude from this week to carry forward in our projects and in our thinking?
first of all, I, I have six points. The first one is the relationship between global and local. More and more people realize that what seem like small local actions build up into greater impact for the common good in wider society. So keep both in mind. Don't be so global that you end up relating to nothing or so local that you forget the bigger picture and get sucked in without the wider context. Secondly, everyone emphasized collaboration and cooperation and partnership. Everyone found like-minded organizations to reach out to. There was no assumption this week that any of us can achieve enough on our own, particularly in a crisis. And evidently from this week, this is true at every level. Across the board, crisis calls forth interdependence, working together, collaboration. We saw how shared concern drew forth shared solutions. And for us, brought out the best in many of not just us, but society in general. And we see the opposite. We see how greed divides and fights to maintain the status quo, which keeps the poor in poverty. Thirdly, St. Vincent's example to us of networking and advocacy. Again, we place more and more evident emphasis on collecting evidence to bring to the influencers and policymakers. We have people to do this. We have people at the UN. We have people, we have a new advocacy group across the family in Great Britain. Tell them the stories. Make sure they have the information. Join the dots. Be like Vincent and think about not just the service of those who come to you, but the policy that creates that and how we can influence that. My fourth point, and I think this will probably come up every year for, for me, the Chatillon method works over and over again. The Chatillon method being the one that listens, that defines a need, that builds awareness and enlists and empowers an organized, multifaceted response. Now, Vincent would, have used, would not have used that language, but that in fact is what happened at Châtillon. So we listen carefully to seek, um, to understand the needs and aspirations of those living in poverty. Listen to them, creating an atmosphere of respect and mutual confidence, self-esteem among us and the people we seek to serve. Construct a shared vision with diverse stakeholders, interested individuals, donors, churches, governments, the private sector, unions, the media, anyone who will listen. And then educate, train, and offer spiritual formation to all, participation, all participants in the project. 
These underlying principles came from the very beginning of Vincent's first insight and continued to be worked on between himself and Louise for the whole of their lives. We've seen it this week, again, in the response that our organisations have made. From, right the way from the detailed service through to the advocacy and represent, global representation. My fifth point brings me to the title of today, The Contradiction of Crisis. So look at the amazing responses we have seen this week to a multiple number of crises happening one after the other, kind of a bit unprecedented in the world. Every presentation was dealing with a multiple buildup of crises that have led to today. Contradiction. Out of hardship and challenge, you, we, have done some of our best work ever. Our commitment and values have shone in all that we've heard this week. You have never been so fleet of foot, so strong, so determined, so dedicated. In the face of the collapse of your services, you have persevered. And it's not over. We don't relish crisis. It always me makes people living in poverty even poorer. Governments only act to favour themselves. Franca talked about those that would be left behind in crisis. They are who we are for. They are our lords and masters. They are our constant concern. They're our DNA, our brothers and sisters, our friends. And in the week, we have examined how each pandemic, war, recession have affected us. Each has the potential for a downward spiral into hopelessness, helplessness, closing down. Many charities did. But that's not the Vincentian way. And you have demonstrated that keenly and effectively. The closing down, the feeling of hopelessness is understandable and human. But look at what happened in, in our world. That's the contradiction. That each of you turned it round creatively, innovatively, inventively, with care compassion, empathy, dignity, and love. With an enormous effort, never giving up and never feeling that it was enough. As Maureen told us about Vincent and Louise, as demonstrated in all we heard this week and before, We can give thanks whilst we deplore the plight of the poor. Holding those two things in tension is the contradiction, the challenge, the gift, the hardship. My sixth and final point is that it's not over. It's not over. Part of the, the financial crisis is only beginning. The cost of living, the global recession, inflation, all of those have not reached their worst yet. And they will touch all of us and the people we're close to our families, our communities, all of us.
So the best thing we can do, leaving here, is to reflect on our experience so far and learn and discern how we're going to cope with the next crisis. The experience we have already had is precious. Analyze it and build on it. Take the time, even amongst the hectic activity, because experience not reflected on is wasted. Listen again. Be in Châtillon again as the financial crisis unfolds. And break through. I'm going to pause now and I'm going to ask each of you to reflect for a few moments and write down one thing that occurs to you that you're going to take forward from this week. So I'm just going to run through those six points again that I have drawn. If you <laughs> reflect back on the week and listen to the recordings, you will find many more, but these are the ones I've selected for today. The relationship between global and local and holding them both in your heart. The power of collaboration, cooperation and partnership. Vincent's example of networking and advocacy and the need for us to join the dots with those that are working in that area for us. The repetition of the Châtillon method, which works every time. The contradiction of crisis and the importance of reflection. And before I finish, I'd like to remind you that we've focused on certain crises, but the Vincentian family all over the world lives with many more. Countries in Africa, countries in Asia, countries in South America, hold many crises that we sometimes hear about and sometimes don't. There are more and our members are there. So that carry that forward into our reflection and at the same time as giving thanks for them being there in all these crises, for us being there in all these crises, we pray for those who are the most badly affected and we stand beside them as Vincentians in today's world. So I thank you for your attention today. 
for the greatness that you are, for all that you represent. All of your faces on the screen represent so much more with all of those behind you and many more who haven't made it to these sessions. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for who, who you are and for what you are doing. And I promise you prayers and support as you continue. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Ellen, for that beautifully reflective session um, and for sharing some incredibly encouraging and motivating points for all of us to take away with us as we continue to support people in crisis during these um, very difficult times. Um, it's hard to believe that another Vincentia Valleys week is, has come to an end already, but um, it's certainly been an inspiring one and an opportunity to gather Vincentians from across the globe to share our collective mi mission. So um, just to echo the thanks we heard earlier, um, big thank you to all of you for, for joining us and taking part in the sessions throughout the week. Um, if you if you missed any, um, there are all the recordings are on our YouTube channel. So if you search Doors of Charity Services on YouTube, you, you'll find us. Um, and I'll also email around the recording link. So make, please make sure that you're signed up to our newsletter so you receive that. Um, and just lastly, feel free to um, uh, reach out to me via email um, if you have any questions or comments about the week. Um, and just again, thank you so much to Sister Ellen uh, for today. That was a beautiful session. And to all of our speakers as well from the week. Um, it's been it's been wonderful to have you all here. So thank you. Thank you, Rihanna. Thanks, everybody. Take care. <laughs>